Right now at noon, why President Trump is lashing out as special counsel Robert Mueller. Plus, the president is defending using tear gas to stop migrants trying to cross the border. And it's Giving Tuesday. We'll tell you how you can keep your information safe while donating to area nonprofits. This is News 3 at Noon. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Mark Kane. Thanks for tuning in to News 3 on this Tuesday afternoon. We'll get to those stories in a bit, but first, let's head over to the Weather Center. Meteorologist Chris Reese has a look at your first alert forecast. A little brisk walking the dogs this morning. <laughs> oh, yeah, those wind chills were back down to the single digits earlier this morning. It's still chilly outside right mm -hmm. now, Mark. Temperatures are only in the low 20s, and folks, that's as good as it gets today as the cloud cover keeps a lot of those temperatures on the cooler side. 21 is the temperature in Madison right now. Teens are showing up just to our north. That's for the Dells, Camp Douglas, Black River Falls, and Watoma. Those teens go all the way back into part of Iowa as well. And there's the cloud cover out there. We've seen some flurries falling out of the clouds at times. In fact, that's happening at the airport right now with the temperature of 21 degrees. The winds showing up as calm out of the airport, but we have had that brisk wind coming out of the northwest just about all morning long. Earlier this morning, those wind chills were down to the single digits. We've recovered into the low teens right now. The wind chill is eight in Kenosha. Same for Camp Douglas right now. So there's still a few of us with those single digit wind chills. But the bigger story into the afternoon, in addition to the cold, we are going to be cloudy as well. We may see a few additional flurries come out from the northwestern sky. We'd expect that cloud cover to really stick around today and highs this afternoon around 23 degrees. But there is a warm up coming for the weekend. I use that term loosely, but <laughs> nonetheless, I do think a lot of us are going to feel like it's a lot warmer this weekend compared to what's out there right now. It's all relative. As, yes, at this it point. is. All right, Chris, we'll see you in a few minutes. Topping our news today, a Rock County Sheriff's deputy shot a dog when he was serving civil papers in Janesville. The deputy says he went to 1121 Johnson Street around 740 last night to serve the papers, but when he approached an open gate, a full-grown male German Shepherd charged at him. Officials say the deputy shot the dog in one of its legs. The dog was taken to the emergency veterinary services for treatment. The deputy was not injured. A 22-year-old Reedsburg man was arrested after a handgun fell out of his pocket while he was at a tavern. Reedsburg police were called to the tavern in the 100 block of South Walnut Street for a report of an armed, intoxicated male. When they arrived, officers confronted 22-year-old Gunner Tempest. A search of Tempest revealed a loaded revolver and a loaded semi-automatic handgun. According to reports, Tempest appeared to be intoxicated. He's facing multiple charges and was taken to the Sauk County Jail. President Trump lashed out this morning at special counsel Robert Mueller. In a tweet, President Trump called Mueller a, quote, prosecutor gone rogue and added the fake news media bills Bob Mueller up as a saint when in actuality he is the exact opposite. He is doing tremendous jam damage to our criminal justice system. The tweets come in response to a court filing from Mueller's office accusing Mr. Trump's former campaign manager, Paul Manafort, of lying to federal investigators about a variety of subject matters matters which breaches his plea agreement being in breach it means that he's facing a substantially higher term of incarceration it also means that the prosecutors have made a decision that they uh, don't intend to use his information or testimony going forward and because of that breach manafort will likely face the rest of his life in prison he could still receive a pres presidential pardon something that trump has said he has not ruled out. And Trump is defending the use of what he called safe tear gas to stop migrants trying to rush into the U.S. U.S. Customs and Border Control, border Control officers say more than 1,000 migrants tried to storm the border on Sunday. First of all, the tear gas is a very minor form of the tear gas itself. Uh, it's very safe. The ones that were suffering to a certain extent were the people that were putting it out there. Mexico is now asking the United States to conduct a full investigation into the use of non-lethal weapons aimed at Mexican territory. Department of Homeland Security Secretary Nielsen said in a statement, the violence we saw at the border was entirely predictable. We will continue to prepare for the next assault while looking for lasting solutions with Congress. Well, there's a big push today for people to find a little extra holiday cash to give to nonprofits. That means it's also a big day for scammers 
looking to profit from your generosity. That's why DATCAP is encouraging people to give directly to a charity, not using links sent to them in emails, but by typing the URL into a computer or dialing the phone number directly. You also want to watch out for typos and make sure you're not reversing any numbers or letters in the organization's name. Imposters tend to buy and use web addresses that look similar to the actual charity. Another thing that consumers should watch for is what, how the request comes in, who they are to pay. Um, so are they transmitting the money to the person doing the solicitation rather than the organization? Um, so being cautious of that. If there's requests to wire money or pay by gift card to the charity, again, those are indicators that that's not traditional means of receiving funds. And we have a list of places you can make donations to up on our website, channel 3000. Dot com. Give generously. There's more to come on News 3 at noon. We'll find out what Howard's working on in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen. Looking for a new recipe to make in your air fryer tonight? Stick around and we'll even tell you about our new cookbook giveaway. With Thanksgiving behind us, many of us are focused on getting our holiday shopping out of the way. And if you're looking for a great idea for someone who loves to cook, or that person who has to cook and is looking for ways to make their time in the kitchen easier, consider this. Air fryers are one of this year's most requested kitchen appliances. We love that they're versatile and energy efficient, but what's really great about them is that they can help create healthier meals easier and faster. Plus, they're available in lots of brands and sizes. To make this holiday season even better, we've come up with a brand new cookbook that features some of the best air fryer recipes you'll ever try. This baby is packed with more than 130 easy recipes. It has everything from appetizers and main courses to side dishes and even decadent desserts. As a matter of fact, why not start out with what we call our make your own potato skins bar recipe. It's perfect for a football watching kind of day or for serving when friends stop by. 
To get the recipe or to enter the ultimate air fryer cookbook giveaway where you might win a signed copy of the cookbook, simply check out our website. I'm Howard in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen where today we found the perfect holiday gift way for you to say, ooh, it's so good. Right, Howard, thank you. There's more to come on News 3 at noon. Uh, mostly cloudy and cold Tuesday across the area. Meteorologist Chris Reese will have your first alert forecast when we come back. The threat of more tariffs bruises Apple and Cyber Monday takes over a whole week. Diane King Hall has more in today's Money Watch report. After a day of gains, stocks started today's session lower. Investors took another bite out of Apple after President Trump ratcheted up trade rhetoric in an interview with the Wall Street Journal saying the U.S. could expand tariffs to laptops and iPhones made in China. Uber is slapped with a hefty fine across the pond. The ride-sharing service was fined more than $1 million by British and Dutch officials for failing to protect customer data during a 2016 data breach. Dutch authorities say Uber did not report the breach within 72 hours as required by regulations. The numbers are in, and Cyber Monday broke records. According to Adobe Analytics, consumers spent $7.9 billion ticking things off their holiday gift list. Over half of online activity came from mobile phones, with people racking up 2.2 billion transactions on smartphones alone. And just when you thought Cyber Monday was over, get ready for Cyber Week. The one-day online shopping event is turning into a week-long bargain bonanza. Companies like Walmart, Amazon, and Target have dubbed it Cyber Week, with daily deals ranging from electronics to toys. And that's your CBS Money Watch report. For more, head to cbsmoneywatch.com. At the New York Stock Exchange, I'm Diane King-Hall. Diane, thank you. The Dow Industrials down 46 points at the noon hour. The NASDAQ down a little over five. Let's check in now with Q106 Farm Director Pam Yonke in the radio barn. The stocks are falling like the temps. 
Yeah, honestly, and I'm with you. My little boys, did they thought I was crazy turning them out <laughs> for a quick romp around the yard this morning. But hopefully things will improve as the week goes on. We still have some corn and soybeans standing out there, Mark. In fact, the last of our crop harvest updates for 2018 came out yesterday afternoon. Still shows that we've got about 88% of our corn that was harvested, about 94% of our soybeans that are in. So there are still a few acres out there. All of the reporters that uh, submitted some comments said that because of frozen ground, farmers were again able to get back out there on what had been previously uh, squishy, muddy ground. So the crop is out there. Uh, Dr. Sean Conley, our University Extension soybean specialist, is encouraging farmers. You may not be very happy with these prices, but unless you're going to crop cover, call your crop insurance provider and uh, get your claim taken care of that way, now is the time to harvest it. We're not going to see moisture levels or anything like that drop anytime soon. We're catching a bit of a rally on the midday as far as soybeans are concerned. Uh, it may not have to do with the G20 summit later this week, but one of my commodity brokers this morning said that yesterday the commitment of traders uh, took a very bearish tone. Then all of a sudden a major trade firm came out with an advisory said that said now corn and soybeans as well as soybean meal are something that they should be buying because it is considered a value. So that may be some of the bounce that we're catching as far as soybeans. Dairy markets today in Chicago. Barrel cheese up a penny at 125. 40 pound black cheese up just a half a cent at 135 and a half. And again today, double A butter down a penny and a half at 221 and a half per pound. So I think, again, this is a perfect opportunity as far as I'm concerned, Mark, for people to gather around the stove, whip together some cookies. Think about Mark and I and our <laughs> hunger pangs right around now on the new show. And send, send the better. cookies in. That's it. That's there you it. Go. We're we're happy to be your uh, your uh, testing platform, and I bet Chris will jump in yes. with us. I sure would. Yes, he's, yeah, I'm ready. He's, he's all in too. All right, Pam. Thank you. You bet. Nice oven on. Heat up the house a little bit in these cold days. I'm I'm for that too. I know it's worked in my own house. I'll mm. tell you that much. But we've been tracking the cloud cover around outside today. It's been with us really since yesterday along with a few flurries earlier this morning and we are going to be under this pattern as we go through the rest of the day. A region of low pressure over parts of eastern Canada and that's just swirling around as it does so we've got in under a strong northwesterly flow that's sending snow showers all the way down to parts of my home state of Kentucky dealing with about an inch of snow today. But here's that cloud cover a closer look down home. We've got a little bit of drier air trying to mix in so that's breaking up the cloud cover a little bit but farther back to the the north and west you have more clouds and more flurries that will swing on through here so here's a live look outside right now showing you the cloud cover and those holes in the cloud cover so just a little bit of sunshine is being noted but the temperatures are cooler at 21 degrees um, winds are still calm at the airport but we have seen a nice wind out of the northwest keep that wind chill around today as well but actual air temperatures are in the low 20s for most of us there are still some upper teens showing up 19 in Watoma and Camp Douglas right now now, Janesville at 25, Mineral Point at 27 as of now. But we've been used to these below average temperatures really since parts of October. But November as a whole has been a fairly chilly month. Out of a 30 day month, we have only seen five days of temperatures that were above normal. And some of those above normal days don't even compare to just how cold and how below normal some of those days were in November as well. So the month as a whole will be below normal. We're staying below normal as we go through this afternoon with the high around 23. Typically our highs around 41. And then by the morning time, we're going to see those lows in the teens once again. By tomorrow, though, I do think we'll get a little bit closer to 30, but still staying in the 20s for a lot of us before the next round of snow works its way on into town. And that's going to be on the leading edge of some warmer air. Of course, we're in this cold pattern, but pay attention to that warmer air over parts of the central plains. As that moves to the north, that is when we'll have a little chance of some light snow coming into the picture. Here those clouds are on Wednesday morning, and then by Wednesday night, a weak little system comes through. That might spit out a little bit of snowfall, but I do not think it will be a lot by any means. The next system comes in into the weekend. Those clouds increasing again on Saturday and then rain and snow moving into the picture. And let's talk a little bit more about the pattern ushering in that system to the mix. Of course, this colder air will move towards the north and east, being replaced by more so chilly Pacific air with the milder air down to the south. It's going to lead to a storm track towards the Great Lakes, and I do think that's why we could see that mix of rain and snow. But as we head into the first days of December, we get a stronger storm track that comes in towards the Great Lakes. That could bring more change 
chances for snow and then the cold really just takes over headed through December. So it's going to be a wild winter pattern for a, at least a week or so that could lead to several storm systems on the eastern half of the country. Here's one on December 4th that could bring more snows to parts of the plains and the Midwest. We'll watch that one closely and as far as how it could impact us. And then another one could develop and go farther south towards the Ohio Valley as we head towards December 8th. So yeah, there's going to be a lot of track or a lot to track, but know that it will at least be cold there. 23 degrees as we head through this afternoon tonight, 14. Man, it's going to be chilly with those clear skies, so do be ready for that. Um, and then temperatures will make it into the lower 30s as we head into your Thursday. That will come with the possibility of some light snow. Um, any accumulations, I think, will be under an inch if it does stick at all. Rain and snow Saturday and Sunday, most of that right now looks to fall as rain, so we're not expecting any kind of winter storm out of that, but it could be a lot of rain that comes on through. We could see more accumulating snows Monday into Tuesday. We're just going to watch it very closely for now. But no big storm right now, the way it looks. No big storm right now. Tuesday, I think, could be one to watch okay. early next week. But again, as you get closer to these things, details come into picture. Absolutely. So as we, well, as we learned last weekend. As we learned last weekend, exactly. So we'll watch that one closely. It's possible. But for right now, I think we're in the clear. Okay. Thank mm -hmm. you, Chris. There's more to come on News 3 at noon. I'm next. Michelle Swader is here to answer your diet and health questions. The number to call, 270 Nine nine three three. We'll be right back. Michelle Swader is here taking your diet and health questions, 270-9933, the number to call. We made it through Thanksgiving. We did. Now it's the holiday season. Yes. Let's eat. Yes, and a lot of times people feel like this season is just one big, long, continuous splurge. Um, and one of my biggest tips is to try as much as possible keeping the holiday to the holiday. If you look at it, somebody who eats three meals a day eats over a thousand times in a year. And if you splurge on a couple meals, Okay. Your body can mm -hmm. can adjust to that. It's when you start 
eating the Christmas cookies December 1st and don't finish them till New Year's that um, it's, it's hard to recover from something like that. So not, holiday season is not an excuse to eat. Eat on Thanksgiving, right. maybe Christmas Eve. Do the splurge during the holiday and then you can really feel like you can enjoy it. All right, let's go to the phones. We'll start with Helen in Madison. Hi, Helen. Hi there, how are you doing? Good, what's your question? Um, it's about calorie control for um, either weight loss or um, weight management. Um, the three meals a day, uh, should that be abided by um, with the general calories or um, smaller, more frequent meals? Um, or that, is that best, especially for somebody who doesn't have a huge appetite? Right, that's a very good question. And it's it's been kind of a shift in thinking, actually, because we had always said more meals would be better because it does control your hunger. You don't go too long without having snacks. However, if you're trying to lose weight, it never really gives your body a chance to dip into those fat stores that you have. So eating really frequently can sometimes stall the weight loss. So sometimes even with the same amount of calories, it would be a better idea if you stuck to three. And sometimes people are doing what's called intermittent fasting, which we've talked about before here, to actually limit the times that you're eating and give your body the rest of the time to burn that stored fat. Interesting, mm -hmm. yeah, didn't think of it. Good point, let's go to Jim now in Monona. Hi, Jim. Hi, good afternoon. Hi, My question, question is, um, I've been using fish oil supplements for almost 20 years now. Recently in the past, uh, I would say five years, I was actually uh, recommended a prescription dose of fish oil. Reading a couple of articles in the past, I've, I've heard yay and nay to the use of fish oil supplements. Mine is particularly used for triglycerides lowering. Could you advise me on what your thoughts are? Hmm, interesting. Right, well, if you get to the point where you're at a medicinal dose, um, it would be hard to make that up with food. Um, if you are just kind of interested in supplementing and you maybe want to work in some more salmon or some more avocado, you could probably avoid the fish oil. If you're getting to the point, however, where your labs or your health is the fact that you need a, a prescription dose, that's probably fine um, to continue on taking that because you're not going to be able to make it up with food. There are different types of fish oil. You'll hear krill is a very common one. It has the biggest component of the best fats, and so a lot of times people will even look for a specific kind and source of where the fish oil comes from. So I would say it sounds like in your condition, um, in your situation, the, the medical supplement is probably warranted. But if you don't need the medical? If you don't need the medical, it's always a good idea, in my opinion, um, to do food first. Absolutely. And so then you go with the salmon and the healthy fats. All right, we're out of time. If you're on the line, stay there. Michelle will talk to you off the air. Good to see you. See you next you time. Yes. Chris has one final check of the forecast. We're going to keep that cloud cover around going through the rest of today. A few flurries can't be ruled out as well. Same for the chances for light snow as we head into Wednesday night and Thursday, but we gradually warm up some towards the weekend before more shots of cold next week. All right, bundle up. We'll see you back here at four. Have a great afternoon.